Hello, this is Professor Billier at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and I'm going to be talking about how to do a ring test, which is a specialized type of test for ring-shaped samples such as blood vessels, and could commonly be done on blood vessel replacement grafts. It's a functional measure not really used for intrinsic strength properties. As usual, when you get on the Instron, you need to calibrate the load cell when there's nothing on it except for the grips, as you can see from the video. This only takes a few seconds. It also balances the load transducer, as you notice in the upper right. As it's calibrating, there's just dots, and they will be zeroed at the end of the calibration. There we have it. These are specialized grips. These are custom-made ones for relatively large blood vessels or grafts. And it's a very simple device where we just put a pin in there and we pull the material. It has a T-shape here so that when it's in the grips, we don't even have to tighten them very much, even by hand, because the T here on the grips will hold it in tension. Of course, the most important thing for the machine safety is setting the safety stop up here, which you can't see from the video too well, but here's the safety stop. And we don't want to tighten that too tightly. We want to bring it down close enough to our grips. To load the sample, we just remove the pin and then slide it in. And of course, every different custom design will be slightly different. And we have a ring-shaped specimen here. I'm just doing a rubber band. You can use any kind of tensile test. Usually I will put a tear load. This is a very small rubber band, so it's going to be hard to even get a, a nice tear load on it. But we want to make it essentially straight. And this machine has a 2,000 Newton load cell, which is a bit too high for this small of a sample. We could bring it up to half a Newton here, below the accuracy of the load transducer. Then, as I said, we can use any tensile test for this. We browse. And so we can do any kind of tension example. In this method, we have the specimen is rectangular. But as you notice, for a rubber band, we have two sides. So if we want the stress calculations to be correct for this sample. We need to measure the width and the thickness of this sample and multiply times two. So I would suggest multiplying using the width value that you get from the sample and then multiplying the thickness by two. You can do different measurements as usual and different calculations for the test and you can show a different layouts such as stress strain or force displacement. Generally, I would say we would want to do our graph as force displacement, load extension, because the real number that we want in the end is the load. And I will do a double Y of load and extension versus time. And we can have different results coming out, such as maximum load is going to be the most important, uh, and the slope, the modulus. The ring test is not especially good for failure test because the sample can fail at the grip where it's being compressed. But it is often used for that. That's a general standard. You should look into the AST 
TM standards for that. So as I said, I'll take the width of the sample. And then the thickness, which was 1.5, but instead of putting 1.5, I'll put 3 so that it calculates it correctly. Under a tear load, I can measure the length here from the bottom of the grip to the top of the grip. Now this, this measurement is from the outer diameter of the two screws. Not between the grips, but between the screws that are in there. choose what rate you want to do and then I'll put my safety shield in front in case something pops but I will wear my safety glasses and stand aside I won't use the safety shield right now because I want the video you to be able to see from the video as you can see the noise is very high in the in the load the extension is dark red the loads in red it's very noisy because it's below the accuracy of the transducer, which is about five newtons for this transducer. <coughs> I'm going to stop this test before failure because I'm not interested particularly in failure of this rubber band. It's going to stretch for a long time before it fails. And I will mention that I did forget to zero the extension before starting the test, and that should always be done. Because right now, when I um, return, don't know where it exactly it's going to return to. And here it gives us our, our values. Again, it's set up for breaking, uh, and it doesn't have our modulus because we didn't go far enough. But that's the general way of setting up the test for a ring test.